And we bring you a game in progress tonight from Westlaco, and it is a non-district game. It is the Westlaco Panthers tonight. They're taking on the Edinburgh North Cougars. Panthers, they're 10 and 13. Edinburgh North, 15 to 12 so far. And at this point, it is the visitors leading six to two. Ball goes down low. It's put up, no good. Fight for the ball, rebound, and up and in. And that shot made that time by Jorge Santa Maria. He is a senior forward, number four. And so the score, eight to two, now a steal. And going coast to coast, laying it up and in for the visitors is Christian Faz. And I believe he has about six points. And there is going to be a timeout on the court. 424 remaining here in the first quarter. And right now it is Edinburgh North ahead of Westlaco, 10 to two. Well, we talked to the coaches before the game, and uh, they both know each other. Of course, Gabe Valdez, he has coached for over a quarter of century for Westlaco. And Carlos Ramos, he was at Cotamides coach for about seven years. This is his first year at Edinburgh North, but uh, these gentlemen know each other very well and enjoy competing against each other. So uh, we'll see how this turns out. But regardless of the score tonight, Talking to Coach Valdez, remember, district starts on Friday. They'll be at Brownsville Rivera, and it's going to be all 0-0. So regardless, maybe if you had a losing record in non-district, you start all over again when it comes time for district play. And the Panthers, of course, they're in their white jerseys, basically white numerals with some purple hint. And we see the visitors in their black uniforms with some gold. Long shot in and out that time, and rebound no good. It was Cade Lopez who put it up, and also Noah Casares who tried to get it in. Casares, of course, played football, and he has the only two points tonight for the Panthers as they try to get things going. A lot of members of the football team here, and talking to the coach before the game, you know, they're still trying to gel. Some of them have not played that much basketball. That shot no good that time and rebounded by the home team. Again, a lot of fun watching these players, a lot of hustle out there for both sides. Santa Maria missed that last shot. Now trying to set things up is going to be the Panthers. Cade Lopez playing point guard right now. We're gonna talk more about him in a moment. That shot up, air ball, no good by the Panthers. And quickly down court come the visitors. Underneath, ball goes out. Isaac Martinez missing the last shot for the Panthers. And we have a substitution. Chris Chavez, a junior, coming in at number three. And he is going to replace Isaac Martinez, a senior guard who started tonight. Ball brought in. Both teams will play various types of defense, man-to-man -man zones. And in the lane, a little teardrop put in by Joseph Cruz. He is the older brother of the Cruz brothers out there. He's a junior guard. Josiah Cruz, he's the point guard. He's a sophomore, Josiah 10. Joseph wears number five. Now down low, put up no good by the Panthers. Fight for the ball. Cantu put it up now, down the court. Come the visitors and a traveling call. So ball will go back to Westlaco. Substitution as we see Cade Lopez coming off and coming in to play the point is Lino Milano, he is a sophomore. Caden Pena, their main point guard, has been injured. Number four, he's had a torn meniscus, ACL problems. But I believe he can come back and play, though he won't play tonight. And that shot, no good by the Panthers, but a blocking foul will be called. Panthers have three team fouls. This will just be the second against Edinburgh North, the Cougars. The foul this time will be against Jose Cruz. First shot put up, and it is good at the foul line. Roy Stroman, I believe. Roy, of course, the football coach's son. Hits both of them. He has missed a lot of time over his high school career. Had a serious football injury, kept him out a year. Don't think he's played much basketball since his freshman year, but back this year as a senior. Driving down the baseline, no good that time. 
but then rebounded in. First shot put up by Joseph Cruz. And then the center, Eddie Gonzalez, put it in. He's number 32, and he's a big guy. 6'2", then the steal, and Christian Faz gets the basket. So big lead right now for the Cougars. And timeout on the court. 152 remaining here in the first quarter. It is the Cougars over the Panthers, 16-4. Well, again, it's good back having an opportunity to call some high school basketball. My name is Scott Harrison. I did the football games this year for the Panthers, along with football Fred. And it's been a couple years since I've been back here to do this. But it's always exciting, and uh, everybody always gracious here at Westlaco. And by the way, we do want to give the officials for tonight. It's Victor Garza, also OCL Silva, and Michael Olvera. So they'll be our three officials. Talk with them before the game. Nice gentlemen. I know people don't usually get to know the officials and have a maybe different kind of thought about them. But when you get to know them, I told them, it's a lot like getting to know bad guy wrestlers' heels. They're actually pretty nice guys. All right, we're back to action. 144 remaining. Shot good from the low post on the left side. And a nice touch on that ball by Chris Chavez. So that makes it 16-6, to down to a 10-point lead for the Cougars as they try to bring it into the front court. And they managed to do that. Not a big roster for them. It was Jose Cruz who has it. And again or Josea Cruz, I should say. They were going to pass it around the perimeter. Westlaco, some strong defense, trying to make them earn that shot, being passed around the perimeter. And turnaround jumper in the lane is blocked that time. So Christian Faz has the shot blocked, and Westlaco will proceed up the court with it. And again, they'll work around the zone, around the perimeter, see if they can find an opening. And now it's passed in the corner. And Westlaco being patient, trying to find that good shot. They do get it in the lane, and the ball will be kicked out. I like the patience they're using out there. Jared Zabata, of course, in the lane. Number zero, shot missed. Back out to Stroman. Stroman puts it up and is good with that shot. Actually, it was Chris Chavez that time. Chavez hits the three-pointer, number three, and it is now 16 to nine. So slowly but surely, Westlaco trying to narrow down that lead. Got it to single digits. We'll see if they can work harder and see what they can do in the final seconds of the first quarter. Just down to three seconds, and it's stolen by Westlaco, and it looks like it's gonna be a shot that as good at the buzzer, nice job by Chris Chavez putting it in. Lino Milano with the steal. So we've played one complete quarter, and it is Westlaco trailing the Edinburgh North Cougars by the score of 16 to 11. This is a K West production. Panthers will inbound the ball to begin the second quarter. And it will be Roy Stroman. Now over to Chavez. The ball being passed around. Also Pete Kentu in there, number 23. And that shot put up. And it is good. So all of a sudden, the Panthers have gone on a nice run. I think they trailed by 11 at one point here before this run started. Something like that. Down to three. 16 to three. And their defense has actually come on a lot stronger and made it a lot harder for the visitors to make those shots. They're not getting the in inside looks, the easy inside looks, like they did early in the game. They do have, of course, the big player, the 6'9 player. That time, a shot put up, and there is going to be a foul. George Santa Maria put up the shot, and the foul will be against the Panthers. Panthers so far, I believe four fouls, two team fouls. 
against the Cougars. First free throw is good. And that last foul was against Jared Zapata. It was his first. Both teams still have four timeouts. Second shot, no good that time. And Panthers have it. Santa Maria missed the second shot after making the first. The drive down the lane, no good. Chavez gets his own rebound, gets it out, and travel before the shot can be put up that time. Traveling violation against Lino Milano, a sophomore guard. One minute in to the second quarter. Remember, here at the high school level, they play eight minute quarters. And again, the ball being brought up. Some pressure, but North Cougars have it. Dribbling the ball. Darian Garza. Good ball goes around the perimeter. Now down low, and it's stolen. Stolen by the Panthers. And they'll bring it up court. Roy Stroman with the steal. Ball pass cross court, and it is stolen that time. Back come the Cougars. Jorge Santa Maria with the steal. He has the ball now on top. Passes over to Joseph Cruz. Remember the Cruz brothers. Joseph, the older one, as a junior. Jose Cruz thought about going in. Now it is shot inside. A little one-hander put up, no good by Darian Garza. Goes out of bounds. Will be the Panthers' ball. Substitution coming in, Christian Faz. He had several baskets in the first quarter. We see going off right now, Joseph Cruz. So the Panthers have the ball down to just a four point lead for the Cougars. Had a double digit lead in the first quarter. But we see Wessego just chipping away at that lead. Doing a nice job. And again, I think the coach was a little concerned, Valdez, Coach Valdez before the game, about this team getting it together. But they seem to be doing that. And what a nice shot, all net, all net from the right wing. A three-point shot by Chris Chavez. I believe that's his second three-pointer of the night. Under five minutes remaining in the first half. Lots of Westlake fans coming out tonight. And now the big man, he will go in. Eddie Gonzalez talked to him before the game. He's 6'9", got the two points. Or actually, his coach told me, well, we think he's 6'9". It changes from day to day. That's Carlos Ramos. Nice sense of humor, but again, really got to defend against that young man. He's by far the tallest player on the court. And again, Panthers being patient. Chavez, low post on the left side. And now sitting out on top to Milano. A lot of Panthers touching the ball each time. Again, no wild shots it appears. They are trying to find maybe even somebody open down low. And is there going to be a turnaround jumper? No, there's going to be a jump ball. So as the ball went inside, maybe trying to get that inside shot. Pete Cantu was tied up. And the arrow, possession arrow, gives the ball over to the Cougars. Coming in now is Asmar Alanis. I believe that's his first action of the night. He will come in. Now the ball in the corner. And now a give and go. And nice drive inside and making the basket. Basket is Jorge Santa Maria. Gave the ball off to the big man for a moment. Eddie Gonzalez then on the give and go. Santa Maria got it back and drove inside for the basket. So once again, it's a five point lead, but this has been a very closely played quarter. 
again, it looked like in the first quarter the Cougars might really take this game away. Well, that shot is blocked that time. It is put up by Cantu, but blocked by Edinburgh North. And we're going to have a foul at the other end. 3.15 remaining in the half. It will be a shooting foul. Jorge Santa Maria, number four, going to the line. And the foul this time is going to be against Pete Cantu. It's going to be his first, team's fifth. First free throw is good. And we have several substitutions coming in right now for the home team. We see Cade Lopez coming back in. Also Ryan Salazar and Gabriel Renteria Garcia. Now Salazar and Renteria Garcia played together on the Panthers football team. Second free throw is good. As a matter of fact, Ryan Salazar missed last season due to a football injury. Unfortunately, I saw when that one happened during his junior year, but he's back, ready to go, trying to make the most of it in his senior year. So back up court come the Panthers. I know they got to within three or four, and this time shot from outside is no good by Renteria Garcia. And very quickly down the court, here comes the Cougars, and that ball handed off by Christian Foz. He gets the assist, and the big man, Eddie Gonzalez, lays it in. So back to a nine-point lead. A little bit of a run now again for the Cougars. And driving in and fouled. Nice drive down the baseline is Ryan Salazar, and he will be going to the line. Got slapped on the wrist that time. And that foul is going to be against the big man, Eddie Gonzalez. That's going to be his second. Of course, I'd like to see him get into foul trouble if you're a fan of the Panthers. First free throw is no good. I think the most points Gonzalez has gotten in a game this year. I did ask him before the game. Highest total of the year was 17 for him. And we have a substitution right now for the Panthers. Coming in is Isaac Martinez. He will come in. And going off is Roy Stroman. That free throw is good. 25-17 the score. 2.33 remaining here in the first half. Good crowd out here tonight. And that time, looked like a pass maybe that went a little wild, almost a shot, I'm not sure. No good, but very quickly, the ball has gotten back by the Cougars. And missing it a couple times is Foz. Now in transition, shot is short that time. Put up by Isaac Martinez. Exactly two minutes remaining. First half. 25-17. And again, you can see the Panthers. They see the zone. They work it around. Try to find an open man in the middle. But it's been a little tough tonight. And we're going to have a foul, I believe. Yes. Foul is going to be against the Cougars. Be against number 23. It's non-shooting foul against Oscar Campos. This time three-point attempt. Up and it is good. Nice shot that time. So Panthers back within five. And again, they aren't afraid to take a few outside shots. I know they've tried to work some inside, but if they can get that kind of balance inside and outside, that would be good. Taking their time. Clock down to a minute. Again, the ball's with Foz. And I don't know if they're trying to work for our last shot. 
Have to wait and see. But actually, no hurry. We're down to 40 seconds. That time, ball brought inside. And no foul called. Maybe they thought it was an offensive foul, but the ball was dropped off by Foz and put in by Campos. The other end, ball got down low, and there is going to be a foul, and Wesco will be going to the line. We see Gabriel Renteria Garcia is fouled. 20 seconds remaining. And that foul on Campos. Going to be his second, team's fifth. Both teams with five. First shot up is good. Coming in now for the Panthers. Noah Casares, a starter. And Kate Lopez will go off. Also the big man, a couple fouls has been on the bench. Gonzalez will come back on. We see Osmar Aranez going off among them. Free throw is good. So Panthers back within five. 27-22, final 20 seconds of the first half. Last time they waited a while before taking the shot. This time tried to get it down low, and it is blocked. Blocked. Santa Maria has the shot blocked, and then quickly going up court, the shot is missed by Renteria Garcia, and there is the horn signaling the end of the first half of play, and we played two quarters. And in this non-district game between 31-6A, Edinburgh North Cougars, and 32-6A, the host team, the Westco Panthers, it is the visitors, the Cougars in front, 27-22. We'll be back with the second half. This is a K-West production. And we're ready for second half action. This is a K-West production. We are in Westlaco, and the Panthers are hosting the Edinburgh North Cougars, who have a five-point lead, 27-22, after 16 minutes of play. Now Westlaco will be going toward the basket on our right, and it is Renteria Garcia opening things up with a three-pointer. So it's down to the two-point lead, and that is the closest the Panthers have had it since this game has started. And, of course, Gabriel Renteria Garcia had a couple of free throws in the first half, so he has five points. And, again, we'll see what they can do. Try to keep the ball away from the big man, Eddie Gonzalez. They get it down to him, and there is a whistle. Gonzalez, I believe, had about six baskets, excuse me, six points, I think, in the first half. But he had a couple of fouls. Remember, he's 6'9". And, again, the shot's going to be put up and is good. So a three-pointer answer that time by Joseph Cruz. He had two points in the first half. He now has a total of five, and it's back to a five-point lead, 30-25. I'm Scott Harrison bringing you the action tonight. Glad to be down here having this opportunity to work with our fine crew, Adrian DeLeon, who's streaming and kind of producing tonight. And, of course, our extraordinaire videographer, Vinny Berry, enjoy his work during football and softball. Now we're going to do a little basketball together. Hoops action tonight. And again, Westico with the ball in the corner, and it's knocked out of bounds. It was Kay Lopez trying to get the ball to his teammate, Isaac Martinez, but knocked out by the Cougars. Still possession of Westico. Chris Chavez, big first half for Westico. And Gabriel Lenteria Garcia misses the shot. 
Put up on the rebound, no good that time. Fight for it, Westlaco still trying to get it. And with the ball is number 10, and there is a whistle. Noah Caceres had a basket in the first half. And the ball will be out of bounds to Westlaco. Westlaco working hard out there, no doubt, given the effort. That shot put up off the mark, and there's going to be a foul. The shot put up initially, missed by Isaac Martinez. Going to be a foul against Westlaco. It's going to be against Ryan Salazar. Actually, it's going to be against, I believe, Cade Lopez. And that'll be the second team foul against the Panthers. Approaching two minutes into the second half, Eddie Gonzalez backs into Renteria Garcia, and the big man puts it up and in. Remember, he is playing with two fouls, missed some of the first half. Now down low, and he blocks his shot, but is it going to be a foul? It was put up by Jake Ramirez. And once again, it's going to be a foul. And yes, it is going to be against Gonzalez, his third. And that shot put up is good by Jake Ramirez. Had a couple of fouls, I believe, in the first half. Missed some time playing. And now it's 20, actually 32-26. Down to a six-point lead. Second shot also good. So it's down to five, 32-27. Cougars are leading just two minutes into the second half. Remember a few moments ago, we saw the lead down to two. And there is going to be a holding foul. Our coaches, of course, Gabe Valdez, over 20 years with the West Lego Panthers. And Carlos Ramos, his first year. Ball comes in. And here comes the Cougars. I believe the last foul may be against Noah Casares. Fans cheering on their team here at Westlaco. Also some people here from Edinburgh North. Teardropper no good from the high post that time. Taken by Joseph Cruz, but rebound to the Cougars. And with the ball is Faz, and he is getting some good defense that time by Casares. And now we have a whistle. The ball is going to be out of bounds. Blocking foul. And it's going to be against the Panthers. Renteria Garcia, his third. Renteria Garcia knocks it out of bounds. Maybe showing some of his frustration on defense here. Four team fouls in the first three minutes against Westlaco. Two against the visitors, of course, Eddie Gonzalez. He has three, the big man. Now running into the lane, putting up the shot and missing it is number two, Christian Faz. And he had six points very quickly in the game in the first quarter. West to go back on offense. And they are going to pass the ball around the perimeter, see if they can find an opening in the middle against the zone. Now the ball is going to be shot by Renteria Garcia following a pass from Martinez. And there is going to be a whistle and a foul. And, of course, that very much is of the approval for the Panther fans who are here tonight. Or actually, I guess... Is it going to be against, yes, it is going to be against the Cougars. Panthers have it. That last foul, by the way, was against Jorge Santa Maria, his first. Ball out of bounds. It is the Cougars. A lot of students are out here tonight for Westlaco making themselves known, supporting their team. That's great to hear in more ways than one. All right, a drive in the lane. Shot up, no good. Put up by Foz. Foz likes to take a lot of shots. 
We are going to have, no, I guess not a foul for a minute. We thought there might be one. It's going to be inbounded by the Cougars. We're going to try to get something going this time. And there is Foz. Tries to get it out to Gonzalez. Back down to Foz. He puts it up, and there is a whistle. So Gonzalez and Foz working together and get the foul against Westlaco. Foz will go to the line, 32-27. Panthers trail, 3.55 remaining. Last non-district game for these teams before they begin district. Foz misses the first free throw attempt. I believe Edinburgh North goes against PSJA on Friday. It'll be Westlaco against Brownsville Rivera. Next attempt. First half, by the way, Chris Chavez. What a first half he had, second shot good. Chavez had 13 points for the Panthers, and he was three of three from three-point range. So he was the big offensive star in the first half for the Panthers. 33-27 is the score. Fight for the ball underneath. And it's going to be a jump ball. Fighting for the ball that time was Jorge Santa Maria and Jake Ramirez. And we're going to have some massive substitutions for Westlaco. Jared Zapata coming on. Roy Stroman among those. Keeping the legs fresh, so to speak. Back come the Cougars. Zone defense. Back on top. Big man Gonzalez playing on top. And then there is a collision down low. Collision that time was between Joseph Cruz and also Cade Lopez. Lopez gets the foul. Actually, uh, it's going to be against Chris Chavez. He gets the foul. His first, team sixth. And there is going to be timeout on the court. 3-10 remaining here in the third quarter. And right now, it's a six-point lead for Edinburgh North over Westlaco, 33-27. As we mentioned, there is going to be girls' action coming up in just a bit. Lady Panthers basketball, their second district game. They lost to Harlingen over the weekend. Again, tough second half. I think they were outscored 32 to 10. And uh, talking to their coach before the game, Griselle Defino, she said it was a combination of their defense and things we were doing wrong. But they're hoping to rebound from that Harlingen loss when they take on Los Fresnos tonight. Again, they're 0-1 in district. We're talking about the Lady Panthers, Los Fresnos. They are 1-0. All right, the Cougars will inbound the ball. Try to get something going on offense. That shot put up, no good, but rebounded by the visitors. Josiah Cruz, one of the Cruz brothers, got it. He has the ball right now. Working the point. He's guarded by Chavez. Now the ball will go on the perimeter. A double team back out once again. And now down low to Gonzalez. Again, passing the ball around. Some crisp pass. And now we'll see if they'll go up with it. They do, and it's missed. Missed on that shot by Jorge Santa Maria, number four. So the Panthers are back on the attack seeing if they can maybe get this down to a one-score game, if they can score a three-pointer on this trip down court. In the lane, it's going to be put up and in, kind of a wild shot by Jareb Zapata. Just kind of hoisted up there going in the lane, but it doesn't matter. It got the job done. Two points, and now a 33-29 game. Panthers trailing, under two minutes remaining here in the third quarter. 
Ball is knocked away by the Panthers, falling on it. And getting the travel call is going to be number 10, Josea Cruz, the point guard. And I believe he will be coming off right now. And then coming in is Darian Garza. Cougars with the ball. Taking it up court. Shot from the corner is good. And I believe that was Garza. So it's now back to a seven point lead, 36-29. A minute 20 remaining here in the third quarter. It was double digits lead for the Cougars in the first quarter, but the Panthers have been clawing back ever since. We have a whistle. Looks like it's gonna be a call against the Cougars. And that foul will it be against Joseph Cruz, his second, team fourth. Ball out of bounds, still possession of the Panthers, down to about the final minute of the third quarter. Let's see if the Panthers can do some damage. Maybe a two for one here, who knows. Fight for the ball, and it is stolen. And then a whistle. Coming up with the steal that time was Christian Faz. The ball is out of bounds. Is there going to be a foul call? I believe so, yes. And in the bonus is the Cougars, so it'll be a shooting foul. That last foul against Roy Stroman, his first. First shot up is good. At the line right now, Christian Faz, top scorer for this team. Getting ready to check in. Asmar Alaniz, number 21 and number 23. Oscar Campos, but not yet. Free throw is missed. And down with the rebound is Jared Zapata, and long shot is good. Is good, I believe. That shot was by Chris Chavez. If it was, he's four for four tonight from three-point range, according to my calculations. Coming to the last 30 seconds of this game, actually the third quarter, Panthers trail now by five, 37-32. Ball will be hoisted up. And it's good, and it looks like it could be a four-point play. The shot was made that time by Christian Faz. Hit the deck, and he's going to go to the free throw line. They do count it. So three more points put up for the Cougars. 40-32 they lead with 19.7 seconds remaining here in the quarter. And Faz going to the line. He's obviously in double digit scoring tonight. That good. Before it's over, may approach 20. And he's going to take a breather right now to close out this quarter. We'll see if Westlaco goes for the final shot as it's inbounded. And the Panthers bring it up court. And there is going to be a foul as it was being brought up court. Non-shooting foul. It was against Darian Garza. Now it's put up by Zapata, no good. But the rebound going to the Panthers. Zapata will put it up again, and this time he connects as the buzzer sounds. And so we now have a seven point lead for the Cougars. We've played three quarters of play and it's Edinburgh North 41, the West Laco Panthers 34. This is a K-West production.
All right, we are going to go to the final quarter of play here in this game. Panthers, as we mentioned, trail 741-34. They get the ball to begin the quarter. And then we'll see if they can capitalize moving toward our right here in the fourth quarter. Ball's gotten down low, and the pass has gotten off, and it's no good. A nice try there, and of course, Gonzalez, the big man, finally gets it. It was Cantu, and also Chavez trying to get around him. But they missed the shot, and Gonzalez finally came down with it. And at the other end, there's going to be a foul against Westlaco. Already in the bonus is the Cougars. That was the ninth team foul. And that is going to be the second against Jared Zapata. Only five team fouls so far against the Cougars. At the line, shot is good. Christian Faz, number two. I believe he had about eight points in the first quarter. Probably has at least matched that here. I should say in the first half. Probably has at least matched that here in the second half. That shot also is good. So for the first time in a while, it's back to a nine-point lead. 43-34 for Edinburgh North. Panthers moving the ball. Here's some fans wanting to see them move it even more, but got to be patient. That time, though, a turnover. And ball will go back to the Cougars. Moving toward our left. Getting ready to come in for Westlaco. Ryan Salazar. Good to see him back. We mentioned that earlier. Missed last year due to a football injury. One of five players on this team that are football players. We haven't seen Donnie Lincoln yet, but the rest of them have played. Ryan Salazar, Gabriel Renteria Garcia, Roy Stroman, Noah Casares. All those gentlemen were on the football team. And now we have a turnover. Ball will go back to the Panthers. As we mentioned, Salazar is coming in. And going to the bench, Jared Zapata. Panthers have not led tonight so far. Trailed by double digits in the first half, especially in the first quarter. Fought hard in the second quarter. And in the third quarter, did get it down to two. Eddie Gonzalez, the big man, has it. Ball is rolling loose. And we'll see, was Westlake able to save it from going out of bounds? Pete Cantu at the baseline trying to save it. And I think they called timeout before he went out of bounds. A smart timeout there. 6.30 remaining in regulation. 43-34 is the score. Of course, K West will have lots of high school basketball this year as well as they've done in past years. Now, especially that we're in a district season both for Westlaco and Westlaco East, girls and boys. So be ready to enjoy all these great broadcasts. And it's a lot of fun. And again, compared to a couple years ago during the COVID era, it's glad, or we're glad to see fans back in the stands, the concession stand open. Life hopefully getting back slowly but surely to normal, or as normal as it can be. So Westlaco will inbound the ball. 6.30 remaining, and the ball comes in to Chavez. Remember, he's been the hot shooter tonight. Over to Salazar. Again, working the ball around. Cantu had it for a moment. Now the ball on top. Cross court. Very patient. We see Donnie Lincoln in there, number 13. And that ball put up and in that time by Chris Chavez. He'll be approaching Twain tonight. Of course, Donnie Lincoln, wide receiver, even running back sometimes, and even played at quarterback. Wildcat quarterback at times for the Panthers. And a very intense athlete. 
played basketball for a while, then quit now back on the basketball scene once again. 43-36, Panthers trail. Seven points, under 5.30 remaining here in the fourth quarter. Ball put up, time just right where he was able to draw the foul on a Panther coming down on him. We're talking about number 10, Hosea Cruz, the younger of the Cruz brothers. He's the point guard, the sophomore, number 10. And that foul is going to be, let's check and see, Donnie Lincoln, senior gets his first. So now we're in the double bonus. Free throw is good. 45-36, nine point lead. Approaching five minutes remaining here in regulation. Panthers seeing maybe they can go on some final run here. Donnie Lincoln with the ball, passes cross court. Now bounce pass down low. Lincoln back with it on top. Panthers will remain patient. They won't try to throw up Aaron shots. Chris Chavez, number three, had it. He'll go in the lane. Has it back again, Chavez. Ball now goes back to him. Roy Stroman in there, number 21. Also, we see Pete Cantu, 23. Those are some of the players out there right now. And ball is dropped off in the lane and a turnover. Salazar looking for a teammate, but instead threw it back to the Cougars and they'll go back on the offensive attack. Bringing the ball up court are the Cougars. Santa Maria had it a moment ago now to Eddie Gonzalez. Back to Santa Maria, working the point. Being guarded by Stroman. Santa Maria and Stroman, now Stroman will drop off and he will guard Cruz. And the ball now put up in the lane, no good by Osea Cruz. Cool up court, here come the Panthers, Donnie Lincoln. And we are gonna have a whistle. Again, final non-district game. Our officials, by the way, tonight. Victor Garza, OCL Silva, and Michael Olvera. And it looks like maybe a timeout on the court. Again, high school basketball now in its prime time, so to speak, with all the district action getting underway. Some this past weekend, some this Friday, depending if it's girls or boys. We very much encourage everyone to get out and support their favorite team. If not, of course, if you're a Westlake fan, if you can't make it out, do the next best thing. Catch games here on K West. Again, we thank both the coaches tonight. Very gracious, spent time with both of them. Carlos Ramos, his first year. Again, we mentioned he was at Ed Koch. I mean, at Economies. I apologize. He was at Economies for about seven years. And Game Valdez, who's been in the district for over 30 years. What about 26, 27 right here? So timeout comes to an end. You can always see all these banners up here at Westlaco. A lot of team success over the years. A lot of sports. So Westlaco has it back, Donnie Lincoln. He gets the ball over to Roy Stroman. Couple football players working together. Cantu, and there's a score. So, it's down to now 45-39. Fans yelling defense. And we're gonna have a whistle, it looks like another timeout. Kind of a chess game when you get to this point of the evening. Trying to put it all together. And um, again, basketball 
in this valley, always competitive. And I was noticing for people that like basketball in general, I see that the Golden State Warriors will be in San Antonio this Friday. And what's ironic about that is they're not playing at AT&T Center, they're playing in the Alamo Dome. And I also think that uh, Steph Curry is back once again from in injuries, one of the Splash Brothers. I went and saw a game in Houston earlier this year, and the Splash Brothers, Clay Thompson and him, combined for 74 points. Thompson himself had over 40 points and over 20 in the first quarter. And I think at the end of the year, even the uh, San Antonio's going to play a couple games in Austin, so they're really moving around this year. But uh, a lot of great basketball in the state of Texas. And obviously, the University of Texas, I believe they're top 10 ranked. All right, we're back to action here. 45-39. 3-13 remaining. Regulation. Six-point lead. Wesco keeping it in striking distance. For a minute, Gonzalez has it. By the way, talking to him, he likes something called British rap. Okay, that's one of his enjoyments, music-wise. Not that familiar with British rap, but I guess if I wanted to, he could educate me. So trying to work some time off the clock is the Cougars. And obviously, no room to foul because of the fact already the double bonus is where the Cougars are. Missed first shot by Faz, then put up and in by Eddie Gonzalez. 47-39 the score. Eight-point lead, 228 remaining. At the line, Gonzalez. Puts it up and in. Hit the three-point play the old-fashioned way. Gabriel Renteria Garcia coming back into the ball game. He comes in for the sophomore, number 23, Cantu. Garcia, of course, is senior. So trying to at least keep this from being a double-digit lead. And the ball will go up. And it is good. Nice three-pointer by Chavez. I know he had three three-pointers in the first half. I think he's had at least a couple here in the second half. So a bright spot definitely there. Ball goes down court and overthrown. Christian Faz couldn't catch up with it. Turnover back to Westlaco. Down to just six now. The lead, 48-42, under two minutes remaining here in the fourth quarter. Donnie Lincoln gets the ball over to Roy Stroman. Now to Gabriel Renteria Garcia, using all the football players out there right now. Down low, and the ball is stolen by Darian Garza. And we're going to have another timeout. Again, 48-42, minute 32 remaining. Probably be about, what, a 20-minute or so intermission, 20 or 30 minutes, and then girls' action will come from here. We look forward to that. And regardless of what happens, talking to Coach Valdez, you know, he's geared up for the beginning of district season. Like he said to me, when you start district, you're all 0-0. So, you know, even if... They don't catch up, and they still have an opportunity. Get a big turnover, hit a shot, get another turnover. I've seen it happen before. The speed these balls move in high school or any level of basketball, you can get those turnovers. Obviously, you've got to get some breaks and play as good a defense as you can. But I forgot who said it. What is it? Yogi Bear or someone, it's not over till it's over, or whatever. That's the kind of attitude you have to have in sports. And considering how it really looked like, and I'm going to be honest, early on, Westaco looked like they might get blown out of here the way they were playing early, okay? But you know Coach Valdez. I know him too well. He's not going to let that happen. He's a great coach. And he got his team going. A little sluggish early. A lot of high percentage shots down low made by the Cougars, but they've come back. Now, 
you're almost going to have to foul or come up with that steal. Just time is not your ally. And of course, that ball comes loose. Is it going to be a foul? I believe so. And you can see the crowd unhappy. It's going to be against Pete Cantu. Tried to steal that ball as cleanly as he could. Just wasn't going to happen. So more foul shots coming up. And this time, it's going to be Jorge Santa Maria. By the way, he was five for six from the line and had seven points in the first half. So he's a good free throw shooter. Seven point lead, 49-42, minute 19 remaining. On that foul, by the way, was against Chavez, his third, of course, double bonus, rest of the way for the visitors, that one in and out. Second miss of the night from the free throw line for Santa Maria, and Oesego will get it back. And of course, uh, their coaching staff encouraging their team. We're talking about the Cougars to play defense. Long shot put up, just barely misses that time by Chavez. Maybe his first miss from three point land tonight. Overall, he's done a pretty good job there. Hasn't missed many, let's say that for sure. Down to 45 seconds. Just really wanting to work the clock down. That's the Cougars' goal. Double team now was number four for them. Jorge Santa Maria. And they called timeout. Smart call by the Edinburgh North. Again, seven point lead, 49 42. And again, you've got to be aggressive on defense, go for the steal. You may foul, but. It's the only way you're going to get back into it at this particular point. Tough situation. Of course, on the road tonight is the Rio Grande Valley Vipers. We wish them good luck. I have opportunity to broadcast with them. Uh, they've been off to a rocky second half start, but we hope they turn it around. They'll have a number of home games near the end of this month. So a lot of good entertainment. UTRGV, they play exciting basketball. If you like hoops, there definitely is not a lack of it in the Rio Grande Valley. 39.2 seconds remaining. Ball will be put in. Gotten in the backcourt to Joseph Cruz. And there's a whistle. Ball is going to be turned over to Westlaco, I believe. Yep. Renteria Garcia gets it in. And going up in the lane, a little Euro step. But missing the shot is Chavez. And it's brought down by Santa Maria. Ball almost stolen that time by Chavez. Almost knocked it away. And again, Renteria Garcia tries to knock it away. Does get it knocked away. And going up there is Chavez. He is going to be fouled as he tries to take that shot down low. 12.8 seconds remaining. 49-42 is the score. Westlico in the bonus. That foul against the big man, Eddie Gonzalez. He now has four. One away from fouling out, but remember, only 12.8 seconds remaining. Nobody has fouled out of the game. First free throw attempt is good. I want to thank, of course, my crew tonight down here. They've done a good job. Adrian DeLeon streaming tonight, helping produce things. And, of course, our videographer extraordinaire, Vinny Barry, providing all the great pictures. They've done the job. Got another timeout in the closing seconds here. Again, seven, actually um, five point lead, 49-44. Lead by Edinburgh North. Closest, closest that the Panthers were able to get it here in the second half. They've never led. They did get it in the third quarter down to two points. 
but that is the closest they could get it. And, you know, they made some runs, but to be honest, the Cougars basically have had this in control most of the way, and the score might make this seem a closer game than it is, but no doubt, though, the Panthers have hustled, and they're still just trying to get it together. Okay, they've got a lot of guys that haven't played that much basketball together, a lot of football players that haven't put in that much time on the basketball court. They're now trying to play some basketball. So you can ask Coach Chavez, this, time, this is a work in progress. And being this close, this is a good sign. And let's hope they just get it all together now for district. All right, ball will be inbounded by Edinburgh North. Eddie Gonzalez gets it down court. And it is laid up and in that time. And that ball will now be shot up and no good. The last shot, by the way, was made by Christian Foz. And there is the buzzer, the end of the game. It's going to be a seven-point victory in non-district action. 31-6A, Edinburgh North Cougars, the visitors. They score 51, the home team from 32-6A. The Westco Panthers have 44. We'll have girls action coming up in just a little bit between the Lady Panthers here of Westlaco and Los Fresnos. We'll take a break and be back with the second game. Again, stay tuned for that. This is a K-West production. <laughs> 